heart murmurs are very common. About 10% of adults and nearly 60% of children have them. Fortunately, 90% of murmurs in children are harmless and called physiological. In adults, however, almost half signal an underlying heart condition. We will cover the top seven causes of heart murmurs. A heart murmur is a whooshing or swishing sound during a heartbeat. It happens when blood flows turbulently through the heart or its valves. The most common type of heart murmur is an innocent murmur. These murmurs occur due to increased blood flow to the heart. Examples include physical activity, fever, anemia or pregnancy. In children, more elastic blood vessels and thinner chest walls can amplify normal blood flow sounds. Physiologic and murmurs are usually soft, short and musical. Patients typically have no other symptoms, such as shortness of breath, chest pain or fatigue. These murmurs often change or disappear with a change in body position. Instant murmurs are usually systolic, meaning they are heard during heart contraction. These physiological, also called innocent, heart murmurs are usually heard best at the left lower sternal border or the apex of the heart. The most common pathological heart murmur in adults is mitral regurgitation, affecting nearly 10% of the adult population. Mitral regurgitation occurs when the mitral valve fails to close tightly, allowing blood to flow backward into the left atrium during heart contraction. Mild cases of mitral regurgitation often have no symptoms, but severe cases can cause fatigue, exercise intolerance and palpitations. When a person feels their heartbeat as irregular, rapid or pounding in the chest, this murmur is heard best with a stethoscope at the apex of the heart, located near the left side of the chest, in the fifth intercostal space between the fifth and sixth ribs. It is a systolic murmur. It occurs during ventricular contraction. Mitral regurgitation is often associated with mitral valve prolapse in young people and ischemic heart disease common in older adults. Mitral regurgitation is harmless in about 60-70% of cases and requires no treatment. Moderate to severe cases require medical treatment. With timely treatment, most patients with mitral regurgitation can live a normal lifespan. The second most common of heart murmur is aortic stenosis. It is one of the common and serious same time. Especially in elderly population, aortic stenosis occurs when the aortic valve narrows, obstructing blood flow from the left ventricle to the aorta during systole, ventricular contraction. Over time, the aortic valve becomes stiff or calcified. Uh, increasing resistance to blood flow Mild auric stenosis often has no symptoms, but severe cases present with three classical symptoms, shortness of breath during physical activity, chest pain called angina due to reduced blood flow to the coronary arteries, synchro fainting due to insufficient blood flow to the brain during exertion. Without treatment, severe aortic stenosis can lead to heart failure and has a high mortality rate within two, three years of symptom onset. This murmur is hard unisystole and is crescendo, decrescendo nature, meaning it increases and then decreases in intensity. It is hard best at the right second intercostal space located on the right side of the chest near the breastbone. Chaotic stenosis is most common in patients over 70 years, particularly those with kidney disease, which increases the risk of aortic calcification. The third most common murmur is aortic regurgitation. This occurs when the aortic valve does not close tightly, blood flows backward into the left ventricle during diastole. Unlike others, it is a diastolic murmur. Mild cases may show no symptoms. Severe cases cause fatigue, weakness, palpitations and chest pain, especially with activity. On auscultation, it produces a high-pitched blowing murmur. It is best heard at the left lower sternal border during ventricular filling. Aortic regurgitation has distinct signs. A bounding pulse known as Corrigan's pulse rises quickly and falls rapidly. 
rate pulse pressure such as 160 over 50 millimeters of mercury suggests severity. Advanced cases may show head bobbing referred to as the Mosset sign where the head moves with the heartbeat. The murmur is loudest when the patient sits up, leans forward and exhales fully. The fourth most common murmur is tricuspid regurgitation. This happens when the tricuspid valve fails to close tightly, causing blood to flow backward into the right atrium during systole. It is a systolic murmur. Mild cases often go unnoticed. Severe cases may cause fatigue, leg swelling or abdominal discomfort due to fluid retention. On auscultation it produces a holosystolic murmur, best heard at the lower left sternal border. The murmur becomes louder during inspiration known as Carvalho's sign. Triswiswid regurgitation is linked to findings like jugular venous distension and a pulsatile liver. Severe cases can cause fluid in the abdomen and peripheral edema. A common congenital murmur is caused by a ventricular septal defect, where a hole in the septum separates the ventricles. Blood flows from the left ventricle to the right ventricle during systole, producing a systolic murmur. Small ventricular septal defects are often asymptomatic, while large ones may lead to fatigue, poor growth in children or heart failure. In auscultation, ventricular septal defect creates a harsh holosystolic murmur, best heard at the lower left sternal border. Complications include pulmonary hypertension or Eisenmenger syndrome, where the shunt reverses due to high pulmonary pressures, a rare murmur, Mitral stenosis results from a narrowed mitral valve obstructing blood flow from the left atrium to the left ventricle during diastole. This is a diastolic murmur. Mild mitral stenosis may have no symptoms. Several cases cause fatigue, shortness of breath or palpitations from atrial fibrillation. On auscultation, mitral stenosis produces a low-pitched rumbling murmur, best heard at the apex with the patient in the left lateral position. It is often preceded by an opening snap from stiff valve leaflets. Mitral stenosis can lead to pulmonary congestion and right-sided heart failure. Severe cases may cause coughing up blood from ruptured pulmonary vessels. 